let us discuss about the cephalosporins fourth and fifth generations. So today we will discuss about the fourth generation cephalosporin, cefepirin, cefepiron, and fifth generation cephalosporin, ceftorolin, fosamil, and ceftobiprol, metocarid. The cephalosporins, as we know, they are the class of beta-lactam antibiotics which were originally derived from fungus, that is cephalosporium acrimonium. They are indicated for the prophylaxis and treatment of infections which are caused by the bacteria susceptible to it. The first generation cephalosporins, they are very effective against the gram-positive organisms like Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. And they are used for skin and soft tissue infection and the prevention of the hospital acquired surgical infections. The successive generation of cephalosporins, they have increased activity against the gram negative bacteria. Now the classification of cephalosporins we are acquainted with and we have seen that these are the first, second, third generation cephalosporin which were introduced from 1960s, 1970s and 1980s and today we are going to discuss about the fourth generation cephalosporin uh, which were discovered around 1990s that is cefepirin, cefepirom and the fifth generation cephalosporin which were introduced around 2016 that is the ceftorolin fosamil and ceftobiprol medipel. Most of the parenteral cephalosporins, they are given by intramuscular and IV injections. The first, second and third, they are all given by the intramuscular as well as the IV injections. And fourth and fifth generation cephalosporins, they are given by the IV injections only with the exception of only cephalosporin, which is given by also the intramuscular injections. The First cephalosporin, they were designated as the first generation cephalosporins. And these uh, generations, they came up based on their antimicrobial properties. Whereas the second, third generation cephalosporins, they are, we are referring them as the extended spectrum cephalosporins as well. The distinctive feature about the fourth and the first, fifth generation cephalosporin is that, that they are non-susceptible to the inducible chromosomal beta lactamases, which are produced by some resistant bacteria. So bacteria has become resistant by means of causing the release of the beta lactamases. Now, the first, second and the third generation cephalosporins, they are destroyed by the chromosomal beta lactamases which are produced by resistant bacteria like the Enterobacter or the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. But the fourth generation cephalosporin like cefepirin, they are not destroyed. So this is the importance of uh, having the characteristic of non-susceptibility to the inducible chromosomal beta lactamases, which are produced by the resistant bacteria. Now high potency against the Enterobacteriaceae. Now, this is also a very important quality of the fourth generation cephalosporins because it is seen that the anterior bacteria, they are causing the hyperproduction of the group one cephalosporinases and this hyperproduction of these enzymes, they are sometimes responsible for a clinical failure of the cephalosporins. So we see that the fourth generation cephalosporins, they work actively against this. And therefore, this is one of the distinctive feature about the fourth generation cephalosporins. Also, they have a spectrum of activity which is resembling the third generation compounds. So we are aware about the antibacterial spectrum of the third generation cephalosporins, that they are effective against uh, a variety of gram-positive and gram-negative organisms like the Staphylococci, Streptococci, Meningococci, Gonococci, Enterococci, Enterobacteria C and also the H influenzae and Pseudomonas. So uh, also against uh, certain uh, organisms and they are having good activity against many organisms like the Pseudomonas, Aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus and Enterobacteria C. Now if you see the chemical structure, we are 
uh, see the structure of the cephalosporin. It has the uh, nucleus, the cephalosporin nucleus, which is modified to gain different properties. And this is the seven amino cephalosporinic acid. And you can see the beta lactam ring and it is fused with the dihydrothiazin ring. So this being the structure of cephalosporin. Now, the fourth generation cephalosporins, they are structurally related to the third generation cephalosporins. But here in this diagram, you can see the structure of cephpirom. And cephpirom, it has a extra ammonium group. Now, because of the extra ammonium group present in the fourth generation cephalosporin, the advantage of this extra ammonia group is it allows them to rapidly penetrate through the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria and because of this uh, penetration it enhances their activity against the gram negative organisms now fourth generation cephalosporin cefepim the antibacterial spectrum as you know it is similar to the third generation cephalosporin and they were introduced around 1990s and they are highly resistant to the beta lactamases and they have an activity against many of the organisms which are resistant to the earlier drugs. So these organisms are the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, H. influenzae, and Streptococcus pneumoniae and Staphylococcus aureus. Now, the, due to their extended spectrum action, they are very, very effective in some of the serious infections like the hospital acquired pneumonia, the nosocomial infections, then they're also effective against febrile neutropenia, bacteremia, septicemia. They're also used in serious infections of the skin and in uh, certain urinary tract infections and also in the infections in the immunocompromised patients. They're very useful against the serious gram-negative infections. High concentration of this drug is achieved in the CSF and because of this, it is very useful in the CNS infections because of the excellent penetration. It has a T half of two hours and it is excreted by the kidney. Then coming to the second fourth generation drug and that is Cefpirom. Now Cefpirom it is, it has a peculiar characteristic. It has the function of zooterior character. And this zooterior character, it is the scene, it is exhibited during the in vitro studies. So this zooterian compounds, they show a rapid penetration to the outer membrane of the gram negative organisms. Because of this particular function, which is there with cephpirom, it has a better penetration through the porine channels of the gram-negative bacteria. And therefore, it is very, very effective against the gram-negative infections. It is resistant to many beta lactamases, and therefore, many of the resistant organisms, they can be um, those organisms which have become resistant by way of elaborating the beta lactamases, they are taken care of. So it inhibits the type 1 beta lactamase which producing organism that is the enterobacteriaceae. So this organism, uh, it is uh, taken care of by cephpirom. So those resistant organisms which are, have become resistant by elaborating the beta lactamases and it inhibits the type 1 beta lactamases. There are different types of the beta lactamases. There is type 1, type 2 and type 3. So this type 1 beta lactamase uh, which is elaborating the cephalosporinases. This is inhibited by the uh, this cephpirom. So it is very effective against the enterobacteries. It has more potent action against gram-positive and some gram-negative bacteria than as compared to the third generation compounds. It also has a good tissue penetrability and it is very useful against the serious and resistant hospital-acquired infections in cases of septicemia, as well as in case of the lower respiratory tract infections. Now coming to the fifth generation cephalosporins, as you know, uh, they were introduced in 2016 
this is a sipsco central drug standard control organization in india and the approval we got in 2016 so septarolin fosamil is a pro drug which after iv infusion it is rapidly converted by the phosphatases to the active septarolin it is very much used for the complicated skin and soft tissue infections as well as the community acquired pneumonia and which is occurring because of the methicillin resistant streptococcus aureus and resistant streptococcus pneumonia now if you see the fifth generation cephalosporins these antibiotics are very effective in many resistant and hospital acquired infections and they are designated as cephalosporins with anti mrsa activity they are recently developed cephalosporins and they have the ability to kill the methicillin resistant streptococcus aureus as well as those organisms which have developed penicillin resistant by altered penicillin binding protein so one of them this is the mrsa uh, which has undergone resistance by causing the alteration of the penicillin binding protein so this is taken care of ceftriolin has the ability to bind to the altered penicillin binding protein which is expressed in the resistant organisms and by binding to this altered penicillin binding protein it is having a useful action against this resistant organisms it is excreted by the kidney and it has certain adverse effects like headache dizziness rashes so hypersensitivity reactions diarrhea and irritation of the injected vein the second this fifth generation cephalosporin is the ceftriolin medocaril which is also a pro drug and it is gets uh, converted into the active form with the help of the esterases as you know that these are cephalosporins with anti mrsa activity so they are active against the mrsa as well as certain gram positive organisms like the streptococci and gram negative organisms uh, which are associated with uh, community acquired pneumonia or the hospital acquired pneumonia like gram negative organisms like the pseudomonas crebsella and proteus they exert the bactericidal activity against many resistant organisms and as you know that in mrsa there is the alteration of the penicillin binding protein so by means of alteration of the penicillin binding protein the uh, the, the this particular notorious uh, organisms the methicillin resistant streptococcus aureus and this drug ceftriolin medocaril has a capacity to bind with this penicillin binding protein pbp2a and thereby it is effective against the mrsa also uh, it also binds to the pbp2b that is the penic the penicillin binding protein 2b and to the penis, uh, penicillin binding protein 2x it is effective against the penicillin resistant streptococcus pneumonia it is also it has the capacity to bind to the penicillin binding protein 5 and therefore it is effective against the resistant enterococcus pcleus it is used as a monotherapy also it can be used as in the hospital acquired pneumonia excluding the ventilator associated pneumonia it is also effective in the severe community acquired pneumonia as well as the complicated skin and soft tissue infections it undergoes minimal metabolism and it has a t half of 3 hours with certain adverse effects like the infusion site reactions and uh, rise in the hepatic transaminases so we have seen that the fourth generation cephalosporin cefepim is preferred for treatment of nosocomial <coughs> serious infections in the immunocompromised host as well as they have a broad activity and improve stability to the bacteria producing the chromosomal beta lactamases 
they are also better than the third generation cephalosporin like ceftriaxime and also piperacillin that which is a semi synthetic penicillin there it is more effective against the third generation cephalosporin as well as semi synthetic penicillin against enterobacter citrobacter serratus species as well as against the pseudomonas those pseudomonas which has become resistant to ciprotaxin and ceftriaxime the third generation cephalosporins also the second fourth generation cephalosporin that is ceftriaxime it has a good penetration into the gram negative organisms and if we see the fifth generation cephalosporins they are also promoted as cephalosporins which are having the anti mrsa activity and also septorolin fosamil has the anti mrsa activity and septobiprol metoprolol also has anti mrsa activity and action against the penicillin resistant streptococcus pneumoniae and also the broad gram negative activity so we can uh, conclude uh, that the fourth generation cephalosporins which were introduced in 1990s and we now have an experience with these drugs from the last two the two, two three decades and these drugs during the period the extensive use during the period of 2010 they were considered to be the class of highly potent antibiotics which are considered to be the a great um, in a choice of drugs against several serious human infections whereas the fifth generation cephalosporins which were recently introduced in 2016 and we know that uh, currently these are being used as such <laughs>